<laughs> one time, <laughs> I saw Manny um, Manny Puig was talking to these college age girls once, telling them, giving them like a, a sex um, education class, and uh, you know how he talks so straightforward and. Yes. And he had this, for some reason, we, he had this big inflatable penis. And he's showing them, he's like, well, the man's going to get excited here. And then if you touch him here, he's going to come. Welcome to the Pontius Show. <laughs> Welcome to the Pontius Show. <laughs> oh my gosh, amazing! But Manny, Manny actually told me the vow. I think it might have been the same girl. He started dating her. She lived, she lived up in Palm Beach or something. So he was driving up to visit her from the Keys, and um, and she just, you know, just thought he was like he, you know, he was this, this buff stud, looked like Tarzan, and she was all into him. So. He, then uh, he was going out with her for for a few weeks, and then he he she was taking a bath. He said, and he can't, comes into the bathroom and he goes poop, <laughs> and right after he's done pooing, he just jumps straight to the tub with her, <laughs> and she was just mortified. Did he wipe? Um, he didn't wipe. I, I think I, I imagine he wiped to a point, but still, like it wasn't with wet wipes or anything. He went straight from going poo into the tub with her, and he'd only been going out with her for a short period. And she like called up um, Mark Rackley and she's like, get this effing caveman out of my house now. Um, <laughs> and Mark had to come pick him up and take him back to the keys because she didn't want to. Take after, him back to the keys. After jumping into the tub at, right after going poop. I love how you were like, he had to, ta he had to take him back to the keys. Yeah, he had to come back to the keys. <laughs> go back to the keys where he belongs. So anyway, welcome to the show, everybody. Hi. Uh, <laughs> um, so we just got back from Scandinavia. We were there for yep. a month. It was really great. And we had a great trip. And um, God. It was fantastic, actually. It wasn't a great trip. It was fantastic. It was the best trip ever. Scandinavia. I mean, Denmark. We started in Denmark. We were in Copenhagen for a couple of days, but we were so jet lag that we didn't really get to experience that much, right? Like, I mean, we went to Sweden and then we went to Norway and we we drove all around Norway. We went to Denmark and uh, Axe got a Lego passport. I don't know if many people know this, but you can actually get a passport from Lego. Did you know this? Legos come from Denmark, actually. Yeah, so you can get a passport. You can get one. Uh, he's got an American one, <laughs> <laughs> but he's got he's got one from Denmark. And I just realized that one of the stamps looks like um, it's giving you the bird. Does that not look like it's giving you the middle finger? That's a tip. That's yeah, a Tivoli it's one. It's it. So we got this one at Tivoli, and there's another store that's in um, Copenhagen, and it's like, and there's. One in Canoga Park. <laughs> <laughs> I want to share, share, show and tell something that I got in Scandinavia too. Online, I made friends with a blacksmith. His name is Niels Ogren. And he wrote to me and said, I should make an axe for you. And I said, yeah, you should. We're coming to Scandinavia. So I wanted, there's this, um, what, archaeologist or, or something, anthropologist, um, some scientist, you know, categorize the Viking axes anyway. <laughs> I love how you made friends with a grown man online. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, some scientist man kind of categorized all the different styles of Viking axes that have been found, uncovered by archaeologists through uh -huh. the years. And there's one called a Type K Viking axe that um, I asked him to make me. So. So sick. He uh, He's actually in Sweden. He drove to Oslo in mm -hmm deliver this to me so this is my type k viking axe probably my favorite wow. actually it's my favorite axe right now Sick, huh? it's super sharp and uh it's a <laughs> we should like demo how sharp it demo. is but we should do this outside we shan't do this we shan't do it inside the studio it's, it's we'll drawn do this blood. outside <laughs> every good every good weapon or tool that you have should draw blood at some point and this one has quickly drew blood on me. Yes. And, and you know, they say the most dangerous time to, the, the time where people most often get injured or cut by a blade is putting it in and out of the sheath. And that's what happened to me with this. Okay. 
I, uh, yeah, I don't complain about painting up, and it's not a good thing because Jeff Tremaine actually told me like some of these they don't have me do like things where um, you get hurt on Jackass where they'll, they'll have someone else do it because I don't I'm not dramatic enough when when I get hurt or I'm right. just like I'm you know too stoic about it like but you know Aaron who, oh. who's fantastic you know he stubs his pinky in 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 you know he, he doesn't even have to do that the world's going going to hades someone could just pinch him <laughs> give him a bit of a old pinch and then he's like ah he yeah he's been known to to exaggerate oh, exaggerate really, Chris? Com- complaint. really i i love aaron and i've been no uh, it's been said I've, i give him a hard time too much but I, know. I will tell you the truth if you gave him a bag of gold he'd complain about how heavy it was like <laughs> That's <laughs> he's, we love he's you, not Aaron. a glass we full love type you. of guy. <laughs> we love you though. But he's fantastic, you know. He's, yeah, he's a good dude. Uh, he's he's essential to the show and he's amazing. Oh. I love Aaron. And um, I don't think he could say the same for me. Um No. <laughs> I don't think last he time loves I wrote to him. I don't think him, he loves you right now. I sent him a text message telling him that I loved him. Not too far long ago, and he never wrote back. <laughs> I mean, if it was a if it was a romantic relationship, and that happened to you, you know, you'd probably feel ghosted. Kind of bad. Oh, he ghosted. He ghosted you. me. Yeah. Chris got ghosted by Eric. Is that Eric, called Ca- Eric? Eric. <laughs> Eric. Aaron, sorry. Danger, Eric. <laughs> Danger, Eric. <laughs> Eric's name spelt so weird. Yeah, her own. Yeah, I wonder if I. I always wondered if his parents just didn't know how to spell. God, I'm giving Aaron a hard time again. No, no not only Aaron, but his family. No, his family are. No, are awesome. <laughs> oh, I think they're no, beautiful Aaron, people. Aaron's probably my favorite and member. And he's of got the a crew. beautiful little girl. Oh, his, huh? yes, yeah, he's. He's. he's da- we didn't know. Daughter is beautiful. Like okay, so he sent everybody a text, and he's like, oh, "Here's my little girl, Yahtzee." And I was like, he named his kid Yahtzee? Yeah. That's so I was like, up. I love the name he chose, Aaron Yahtzee. And, um, and then he's like, her name's not Yahtzee. Her name's Cedar Moon. And, um, <laughs> and I was like, because he wrote, look at my little girl, Yahtzee. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, your kids, hey, Yahtzee, if you're out there, it's a cool name. We were, to be honest, I was kind of like, I kind of like Yahtzee better. <laughs> no, 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 Cedar Moon's a good name. Cedar's a cute name. Yeah, it is. Um, but Yahtzee's better. Yeah. I always thought a good name for a kid would be voila. Like when it comes out of, when it comes out of the mom. Oh voila. <laughs> and it would have the cool little mark over it. So listeners, if you're, if you are expecting a child and she is a female, um, Yahtzee and some food for thought. Voila. Voila. And Yahtzee. <laughs> Yahtzee. Yeah. Yahtzee. And voila. Voila. And um Voila Yahtzee. Oh God, I have another girl name. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, God, um What is it? Oh, I can't remember. It's in my girl name list though. When we were when we were expecting <laughs> a child and not knowing if it was gonna be a girl or a boy, I'm you know, compiled you know, as as you would compile the list of names. Actually, it was when Jeff Tremaine was expecting a kid. I started trying to think of names for his kid. What can you tell me? Um, do you have that list? Um, yeah, I do have a list. Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm going to talk Oblivia. about Oblivia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like you're, you've gone to Oblivion. Oblivia. I thought it sounded like a tough name for a girl. All the. <laughs> <laughs> So there's another. How do you spell it? O b l i v a i a. Oblivia. Um, Oblivia. Oblivia. So if I start writing Oblivia in my phone, it'll come up. <laughs> yeah, Oblivia. Oblivia. Um, Obliv- um, o b l i v i a. So Oblivia. Oblivia Tremaine. I give you another good name for a girl, Anana. <laughs> Like it's like that Ice means Chris. you know pineapple. that means pineapple in, see in in, in Norway right yeah Swedish Swe- and Swedish French and, yeah probably a bunch of languages over in Europe Nor I guess it's like in in Norse yeah. yeah so um so it means so it's like Anna na Anna na so instead of calling your girl Anna call her Anna na Anna na cute and it also Anna-na-na. means pineapple which is 
which is a delicious fruit. Yes, <laughs> it is. Oh, actually, you know what? I, I discovered a new technique with pineapple. Is that you know how it gets like little spiky in your throat when you eat too much pineapple? It's because actually there's like little tiny, um, like it's almost like little thorns or hairs that are in the actual fruit. So soak it in water for like a couple of seconds and it gets rid of it and you can eat as many pineapples as you want. Did you know that? No. I just take it. <laughs> yeah. I know. It apparently makes your cum taste good. Oh, well, I mean, it, right? oh, it, it, it makes your cum taste sweet, but sweet. It, could make it, it, it could make it taste too sweet. That's the thing. All right. Oh, I'll I tell you a that. story. Okay. Tell me. <laughs> Listen. All right. Um, I moved. Um, I, uh, at one point in my life, I, um, me and, and some friends moved to Hawaii. And, um, you know, um, and, um, so we moved there and, and um, you know, pineapples were, were readily available at a fair price. So I was eating a lot more pineapple than normal. Mm-hmm. And I think I think right when we got there, I was so excited to be in Hawaii. I was in pineapple juice was on a great special at the store. So I was drinking tons of it. Anyway, one night I was, well, masturbating and <laughs> and, and and I uh, I I shot myself in 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 the face <laughs> and and it got as you can imagine i got a taste of it and it was too sweet <laughs> so too much of a good thing <laughs> it's not always a good thing <laughs> i've never told you that story before i haven't thought about it since it happened to tell you the truth i don't think i've told anybody that story <laughs> <laughs> I was so. Oh my god! <laughs> you know. I, gotta, I gotta take a break for a sec. This is this, this is a little this is a little intense. Well, we moved into a small apartment, and privacy was hard to come by. And so, I guess I was a little bit built up. <laughs> and, that, that, <laughs> and so, you know, the. Uh, yeah, it was a blast. But would you do it again? It was a sweet blast. I, it's not really up to me. It's it's up to, <laughs> it's up to the Warhammer. <laughs> oh my God, Chris! Oh, oh God, so pineapple. Is, so we went uh, Scandinavia. So we, to- <laughs> <laughs> so we were in Norway, and um, we took a boat ride to tour a fjord, and um, so <laughs> which was so. Sick, by the way. If you ever go to Norway or if you ever go up there, I would highly suggest. I mean, we only had time to do sort of a day trip, so we did a day trip, and it was like a four or five hour uh, ride. Yeah, Norway basically the whole country looks like a national park, like like pretty the whole country, the whole country. Like, in at least the parts we went to. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, everywhere you went. It well, as soon like- as you get out of the cities, it's like full on. It, it's it's just trees and beautiful waterways it's so water everywhere it's so clean and it's like there's so many like valleys and so beautiful full of water full of water all over the place yeah like, it's amazing but yeah so we went on this 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 tour of a fjord and um the boat was was this really sick boat but it had these um bathrooms that had these autumn automatic push button doors. So one of us had to use the restroom. No, it was Axe. Oh, it young Axe had to had to be taken to the restroom. So we went in um the the doors when you go in the bathrooms you have to lock the door yourself. Yes. So we push the button, the door swings open like really strong powerfully and it was this- a violent door. It was a disabled door. So this is a disabled room and also a parents room at the same time. And in order for the door to open, it was on this like hydraulic system and it was really violent, right? It violently opened and a, this British woman that was on the same tour forgot to lock the door. And so she's sitting there on the toilet going, <gasps> well, maybe going poop. And, and, uh, <laughs> it was terrible. And, oh, and, and, and was like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And But then you can't close the door because it has to wait for I, the hydraulic system to like. She's like, she's yelling at me. <laughs> I'm so, hold. I'm. Are you holding X or I'm holding? X? I, yeah, I, I was so, trying to be a gentleman, so, so I turned he's around. She's turning around and she's yelling at me. She's like, close, "Close the that? door!" And I'm trying, but you it's can't like, close it. It's this. You a know, gorilla couldn't like, close that door. It's like a hydraulic <laughs> system, and it go. It closes slowly. So slow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. But, you know, I have a complex about that because I really like either I watch the door. If I can't lock it, I like I'm like watching. I'm like 
nervously peeing at the same time, but I'm watching the door to make sure no one will try and open it. Are you, do you feel like that? Oh, no, because you're a dude, so you're... No, and yeah, no, I don't care. But no, yeah, it's yeah. different because, yeah, your backs are faced to the yeah. toe. But yeah, I mean, it, she knew it was her fault that she didn't lock it. Oh, but man. yeah, I, I felt bad. But I felt so bad. And, and yeah, it was awkward. And yeah. <laughs> but you know what? She shouldn't have been using that bathroom. Yeah, she shouldn't have. Um, why? Because she wasn't a parent? <laughs> or, or she should have held it or she, she should have used a different she, bathroom she, she should have used but if it one. wasn't us that barged in on on her going oh, yeah, it was to gonna the bathroom be it else. would have been some other sure. person because there was like there was a group from japan that was like in line for the bathroom too oh yeah and imagine how awkward they would have felt oh totally you're like, lucky you had the pontiuses yeah but yeah <laughs> I, I turned my back and I, I felt bad but it wasn't it wasn't even my fault but yeah i mean but you, you know what? Right? Okay, so there's like a few things. So that the I... bathrooms in Scandinavia are really tech. Oh, you're sick. <laughs> but They're make sure so you lock good. them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. What else is like really amazing? Okay, so the city in Stockholm, Stockholm City is beautiful. We um found a lot of play areas for acts, so a lot of playgrounds, and um, they're just free to use. Um, they're super clean. There's the kids are super friendly. Um, they have rad toilets and they have, they they have, have like little like a uh, classroom sort of thing. They have like right? a little playhouse little for the yeah. kids that then go in and play. And there's all this awesome stuff there and little kid sized toilets and coffee for the grown ups. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Awesome. Yes. Like, yeah, Scandinavia is. I don't know. I, I just I didn't want to leave. I honestly didn't want It was really hard for me to leave Scandinavia. It was really hard for me to leave. Uh, Stockholm. It was really hard for me to leave anywhere in Norway. Like, and that's why you're you're now learning Swedish. I am learning Swedish. I'm not going to say anything because I'm embarrassed. <laughs> 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 but I'm, I would like to converse with someone, like what, have a conversation, actually, like talk to someone instead of like a, a, a you know a computer. What's the word for actor? Uh, Skådespelare. See, I'm not even going to attempt that to say <laughs> I am a Scottish spell. Wow, right? That's, That's a big word, though. Interest. Thanks, man. Um. Oh, and you can drink out of the tap in yeah, Scandinavia. Tap. <gasps> tap water. Yeah, the tap water is like super delicious. Yeah. Okay, so like we were buying bottles of water because we were just used to it, you know, whenever you I mean, I, I hate buying bottles of water, but we when we first arrived there we were like, oh, let's buy a ton of water for our room. And they're like, why? Just drink the water. You can drink freaking water there. You can drink the water so fresh, the air so clean. And in Scandinavia they have a freedom to roam policy. So you can just Go out into the wild and camp out there and forage, freedom to forage. Yep. Find delicious mushrooms and eat them and um, live off the land. Yep. You can drink the water. You can drink the water anywhere. It just feels, it is, it just does feel so free. Yeah. You know, the freshest water I think I tasted was in the, uh, correct me if I was say if I'm butchering this, but Gudewagen. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, so we stayed there for a couple of nights and there was there was like seven waterfalls surrounding us and it was raining a lot so the waterfalls got pretty intense um and the water there in that area was just fantastic wasn't it oh it was amazing it was like yeah you just got to go there yeah go there it's awesome it's so beautiful it's, it was magical that and, place and um it's so traveling with kids is always is always exciting and oh. and um there but Axe was a very good boy on the plane. He was. Okay, so so I think Axe is kind of used to it cuz like he's racked up like over 100,000 miles. Coming back from Shark Week, the first Shark Week, yep. Axe was 1 years old and we were coming in we were about 20 minutes from landing and the flight attendant woke Axe up. Yeah. Why, why? Why would you do that? Why would you wake a sleeping baby on a plane? So his ears were um, were hurting. So he started crying and he was oh. upset. And um, there was some guy that was sitting in front of us that like eventually like lost his temper and starts going, ah, like just so mad. Like it was this like little punsy guy from Miami in him. And um, that probably felt special that he was in business class or something. Yeah. And, um, and um, he didn't know that... Um, 
that that it that was. I was traveling uh, with a bunch of people, a bunch of brute men, brute, including the husband, yes, and a bunch of brute men. But see, the thing was is that we were actually landing, so he was crying during the landing phase, and it wasn't like he started crying at the beginning of the flight and yeah. c- and cried continuously. So we were all everyone w- was awake because we're landing. Yeah, and then um, and believe me, when you're a parent, you want to. You're trying your best to make the the kid not cry. So we had already landed. We'd pulled into the gate. And I was like, okay, Axe, just cry it out. Let it out. Let it out. Like, we're here. Go for it. Just scream. Because everyone's getting off. Everyone's away from us. And um, this guy decided to snap at me. He said, you think you'd know better than to take a baby on a flight on a Sunday night. Oh, and that. And, And um. And um, then I, then I, I, she didn't know that I was there, and I was like, I, I was like, I'll make you, I'm gonna make you cry, and um, you know, I said, you know, I said something like stern to him like that, and um, it, it involving making him cry, and he got scared. So when when, you, when when you travel with a kid, yeah, so you, when you have to meet, wait outside the door of the airplane for your stroller. Yeah. So we're si- I'm standing out there waiting for the stroller. He thought we were waiting to like kick his yeah kick his cause... tail. <laughs> Kick <Yeah>. is behind, <laughs> but um. So we had a few of the producers Which and kind other of and other people and other people of the cast like from the Shark Week that were was with us traveling with us, and I had to tell them what was going on because Zach was upset, Chris was upset, and oh, yeah. the cops were there. You no, know, the cops weren't there, but, but before then, that, he was afraid cops, to get off the plane. Oh yes, but the cops were there and they saw us and they saw us with a crying baby and they were like, "What's going on?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know." He was crying, and someone decided to call the cops on us because uh, Chris Chris retaliated. And the, one of the cops is like, "This is." He's like, "I got two kids. They cry. Kids cry." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know." And um, so they thought it was ridiculous. So the cops were like on our side at that stage. Um, and so we were just waiting for his stroller, and um, so someone. We're, we're, I want to rewind a little bit. Rewind. So we're waiting outside the plane plane door for Axe's stroller and this guy comes walking out and it was still like coming out of COVID so people had masks on this guy walked by that I thought was the guy and I walk up to him and I'm, and I'm like shove him <laughs> and he's like it's not like, the guy not I grabbed him. him like I don't know what I was gonna do I was I was starting to lose control it's and he's so like it's red. not the guy I'm like oh I'm so sorry and the guy's like it's okay and they <laughs> and like so we nice. became friends <laughs> yeah so so then, anyway, the guy the guy didn't never came out, and so when we get, when we get our stroller, we go out into the terminal, and the the like four police come up, and they're all like, in a, a representative from the airlines like comes up to ask us what happened, and so we tell him, and he's like, did you say anything threatening to him? And I'm like, uh, I did tell him I would make him cry. He's like, well, that's mildly threatening, you know. I've I've seen it all. I've had someone spit people spit in my face you know, just the day before. But, so the cops come. He, up, yeah, he was like, "Yes, yeah, someone spat at me the day before yesterday." We told, and I was like, "Jeez." We told him what guy. happened, and, and he was super cool. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, our baby was was just crying," and the guy lost his temper, mm-hmm. and um, then he was harassing my wife. And so the cops come up, and we tell him. The cops were like, "This is ridiculous." He called us, telling him he fe- was fearing for his life, and um, and like so, then the cops are like, you know, it blows over. Then we go back down to pick up our baggage. The cops come down again. They're like, "We got another call." I'm like. We're waiting for our baggage. Like, oh, he called us like saying like, we're, we didn't go down there to follow him to beat him up. We all have to go to the same place. So it's ridiculous. anyway, ridiculous. You better watch out if someone has a crying baby on a plane. You better watch out. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it might just not be a it might, it unaccompanied might be, it mother. Might, it might be. It might be Chris's baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's a good thing though that like I. I it's a good thing you told me that I had the wrong guy because there's no telling what I would have oh, done to him. Oh, I know. But I, I don't know why you would have just had attacked a, a random dude. I don't know. I would miss, um, I, he, he saw red. I, I think I, like I saw Chris red. Was seeing in a red. Mistaken identity. He was, yeah. I don't know, maybe he was dressed similar. They, they both had masks on. Yeah. <laughs> Mistaken identity. I've had it happen to me. Didn't look anything. <laughs> <laughs> But then, then when we ran into the guy actually at the baggage claim, the guy that I had the mistaken identity of, he he sees me, he's like, oh, like he like played up to it, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, man. I gave him a hug. He was super cool. See, they became friends. Yeah, you know, I've been in. in but a, I mean, the thing is, 
though, right now, <laughs> I think there's like a lot more incidences on planes and during travel, like airline travel, it's pretty stressful because there was like two years where the whole world didn't travel. And so I think it's kind of catching up. But I a plane just had to turn around because of diarrhea. Do you know that? Diarrhea. Yeah. yeah <laughs> diarrhea came was was it Dave? Have you seen the photos? <laughs> no. no. The carpet up. Are you? Shitting they me? had to actually turn the plane around because it was so hideous. And the in the passengers, the other passengers were not upset about it. They wanted to get off the plane because it was so disgusting. A river of diarrhea coming down the aisle way. No and way. Yeah, they, usually on they, top of all this, they applauded like, the pilot for making the decision to turn the plane around. That is fantastic <laughs> oh man diarrhea on yeah. the plane yeah which wait so it came out of the toilet Maybe down the didn't... aisle or well, he he was going up and down the aisles i think i think he couldn't it was like he a, probably couldn't hold it in look, look at the photos look at the photos it's this is a medical emergency can i what was the i don't know. what should i search if you search diarrhea on plane <laughs> it'll come up what? it's a current event really yeah it just happened. And I don't consider that misbehaving on a plane. Maybe he could have planned better with <laughs> with his choice of medication. I don't know. Wait, on um, he had uh, medication? I oh diarrhea anti-diarrhea medication maybe could have taken or some someone had it. I guess that takes a while to kick in. I don't know. I don't know. I You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> that is a foul. Oh my god, it's like a river. <gasps> oh, that's putrid. Oh. I'm just glad god. it wasn't me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. But so, you have peed on the plane in the aisle. You I did pee on the aisle once. So I uh I the missed... pilot pilot was like, whatever. <laughs> on on um be okay. Poop well, no no. Well the thing is it's it's the it's the when people are misbehaving on planes, it's really the way you're misbehaving. If you're doing it in a mean spirited way, that's when it's trouble. But this is like back in Wild Boys, and in um, I think uh, I mis prescribed myself sleep the sleeping medication, maybe. <laughs> and I I tried to wash the sleeping medication. It was a long flight, you know. We we're going to Africa, and, and um, washed it. I uh, misdiagnosed, you know. Maybe I took one extra. And I, I washed it down with some red wine, thinking it would help the medication work better. And unfortunately, it tur it made my brain go to sleep, but not my body. And um, <laughs> and um, I went to the restroom. I made it to go pee pee, but I and I opened the door, but I turned around the wrong, not the direction of the toilet. I I, I turned around to the audience <laughs> and went pee. And so I didn't see it happen, or I don't remember it happening. But I woke up and one of the PAs was sitting next to me that wasn't sitting with me when we took off and he's and he's shaking his head. He's like, oh, you've been bad. And I'm like, what? And he points and <laughs> over across from the restroom, there's this big puddle like with like like papers over it to soak it up. And and he's like, that lady's really mad at you. So when we got off the plane, we had to meet with like the the people from British Airways and the lady was like, she was trying to like make a bigger deal than it was. And so she had her British Airways employees. And then I had my group to like, and I had to explain what happened. And, you know, by that time, you know, the medication wore off and I was a regular nice, charming guy. Yeah. I am. And um, they were laughing. They're like, actually, she was being really rude. But um, I think she was trying to milk it, you know, for a little greenbacks or something. Oh. <laughs> Three or maybe in England, bags. some pounds. Some pounds. But she was an American lady. Some um, shilling? Yeah, some shillings. <laughs> shilling. But yeah, um, yeah, trying to say like she was worried I was going to like do something dangerous. But really, I'd made an honest mistake. But, you know, now, you know, around that time, a lot of people were making similar honest mistakes. Yeah. We've and been on I think plane. it's when, when Ambien had come out oh, around yeah, that time. Yeah. And people didn't know. when Whenever you hear about like someone doing something bad on a plane that was kind of weird... Like that. They were on Ambien. Yeah, it was Ambien. Ambien mixed with with uh, you know a drink or two can it it makes your body your mind your body stay awake but and your brain not. And also in the plane things change. You know, like a good everything friend. Everything changes up there. A good friend of mine that I grew up with actually when we went to go film in India um did something very similar. <laughs> Diarrhea. No, 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 not not that guy. That not that guy's story. My story oh. of, of misdiagnosing his his um herb. 
misprescribing himself Ambien in the red wine. And um, when the Indian, our Indian film crew picked him up, they're like, they found, they heard about it from the airline, like that he was like, you know, a little misbehaved, misbehaving on the plane. They're like, of course, he's from the same village as Chris. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what people from my village do. <laughs> we just are naughty on planes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, I heard from like the our our um, costumes lady that he actually woke her up while she was sleeping to, to ask her to like he's like they cut me off would you get me a drink and she she opens her eyes and looks up and holding him up are two flight attendants <laughs> while he's doing it like he's being sneaky <laughs> they're like no we can't get him a drink <laughs> but he's like being held up yeah he's like, I said they're holding him can up can you help me get yeah. another drink yeah yeah, he's trying to sneak it while they're holding him up. But yeah, our, our Indian film crew is so awesome. They're like, oh, he's he's from the same village as Chris. I so, love how you have a village. Yeah. <laughs> we are from the same village. Yeah. Chris's village. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, people from my village are awesome. We've been on a couple of plane rides where people have done like weird stuff though. I think when we were traveling to Australia, you know, it was like you, me. Oh, no, it was myself. You, Dave, or we men? We were with, no, we slept with we men. We didn't sit with Dave because me and David had a quarrel earlier over oh. over who gets the biggest room on, on the boat that we were oh, sleeping well, on. Reg- oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true. But I remember we were on a plane ride. Um, it was a, it was like to Australia, and this little kid in front of us had um, projectile vomited everywhere everywhere and and it like i remember seeing it and i saw this vomit just kind of go over and and it it went over the seat and it hit like the people in front of him and it was like in this girl's hair yeah he didn't just vomit on his parents he vomited on someone else but i ran into the dad in the in the toilets area Uh and i was like oh my god is the kid okay um and the dad looks at me goes is my kid okay what about me? <laughs> and he had vomit all over him. And they had to get him um, a pair of pajamas from the first class. Like, that's how bad he got vomited on. He had to wear pajamas. and But, like, he was concerned about himself. I was concerned about the kid. And he's like, what about me? Oh, my God. Because he got a little bit of vomit on him. Oh, my God. Or but- a lot. But you know what's going to happen? We're going to get vomited. Oh, we have been vomited on. Oh, yeah, on. we've been vomited Max, on multiple Max times. Max vomited on us on yeah. the plane. Yeah. He got really sick. On the way back from the Philippines, Ax yeah. got sick. And so, the whole time he, he vomited. He was vomiting the but whole time. But other than time. that, he was a really good boy. No, he. you know what? <laughs> what was really cool, though? He went through immigration with no pants on. <laughs> yeah. Who can say they've done that? Yeah. <laughs> no pants through immigration. <laughs> Mom. During Wild Boys, yeah. we had so many... Like oh my god, naughty plane rides. I bet, <laughs> but you know what? This wasn't even during Wild Boys. Yeah. This was like just no, in the life. last like ten years. It's awesome when you see someone else being bad on a plane. Oh, it is. And now, now you know. But you know what? I don't think I've ever seen anyone get kicked off. Um, you know what I think is a little crazy though is when they turn the plane around and like you're halfway, and and like they turn the plane around and you got to start it all over again. And that sucks. That sucks for everyone. Unless there's... But I don't understand why those people that are really defiant and it's like, it's like, well, what point are you trying to prove when you have to punish every single person? But what about when you, you know, when you see it, aren't you like a little more wary these days about suspicious people on planes? Like people that are like messing with like the exit door or oh, I, yeah. I watch people that like, you know, like... I I've, been, trying, I've been suspicious lately I was trying to find like who the... Uh, um, who the, what's the the dude? There's like a person there. Oh, like the, a, the air marshal. Air marshal. I was trying to find the air marshal. Like I was trying to look and see. You guys, one of those people. Like I look and see. I'm like he doesn't have a suitcase. He's got a little briefcase. Like I'm Cordell like, mm. can spot him from a mile really? away. Really? Cordell's got one of those like trackers. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. He's our sound man. Yeah. Um, but um, um, but oh, yeah. No, I'm, you, I, 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 I when I'm. I'll tell you a story. Uh, okay. No. When I'm suspicious of people, though, I not only like keep an eye on them, I make a plan of how I'm going to subdue them if it comes down to it. Oh, really? Yeah. Even like when I'm coming around a corner and I see someone like to the left of me, like if I'm like, I'll, I'll plan out my attack if I need to like defend mm-hmm. myself and like what kind of kick, 
Like if I like if they're at a weird angle, the best way to you know get them would be a spinning kick, you know. And I'm I'm not a master of spinning kicks. I'm no Max Holloway, but watching an angle from I saw him when he was fighting someone at the end of right when the before the bell rang, I learned from him how to get someone at an angle. And I've taken a few karate classes, <laughs> but I always make my plan. But you know, um, I I think that's why people should wear belts on planes. Because if you needed to subdue someone, you could like belt them and have them like kind of strap you ever yeah, or across. Like, don't you think that's pretty cool? Like, if you, if you, it's a good idea. Like, yeah. Belt, have you ever tried to move out of like a hold where like your arms are like strapped down and like you can only do this? I've never been in the situation, but I do make my plan of, of, of how I'm. <laughs> but don't you think that's a good? Well, I always make my strategy. plan of how I'm gonna. I'm gonna like make the guy go unconscious. So when, when he's unconscious is when you could step in and tie him up. Do you think that- um, I would be the, I, I would be- I think they should have rope on planes. Yeah, they should, like, or, or, or paracord, once paracord. again, paracord is handy. Tape. I love or duct tape. tape. Have you ever seen those photos of people taped yes. to their chairs to keep them up? See, so, same thing with a belt, right? The belt, like a belt that goes across. Whenever I am in a situation where I need to subdue someone, I always use the my my trademark is the guillotine, and um, I just I we did have we a see. a methamphetamine <laughs> salesman living up the street from our old house. Oh yeah, which that same house had one of the most perfect Skate empty pools. swimming pools that you ever saw. I bet I bet if you if you see, I think maybe you've been there, Ira. But it was like, it's like on Nichols. Like we would always oh, yeah. see a bunch of skaters like on the weekends, like skating down the street and they'd park across from our house. And um, like, we'd know some of them and they'd be like, oh, hey, what's up? And I'm actually the like, one oh. that emptied the swimming pool. Oh, he, so yes, he, he did. Some, some friends of mine were over at our house one, one night and we were up a little late and um, I was telling them about this pool. So I figured it'd be a good idea to, to introduce myself to the, to the, <laughs> to the, the owners of it, to the neighbors, to the neighbors <laughs> who, who who sold meth for a living. Um, yes. <laughs> God, is, well, I go to their house and look. Is that the one that was like someone famous's son was yeah. living there, yeah. and the, the, the meth guy was the guy who was guarding? I've definitely yeah. been yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't even know if I should talk about the story. No, but. you. We'll talk about it later when someone like we'll talk about it to someone who skated that meth pool. Some weird people and, selling. And they started charging people. It was $20 a, a go. Yeah. <laughs> $20 a go. We, we, we brought them weed. We used to bring them oh, weed. Oh, you did? It's the one with the rough stone yeah. for pooping, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it was and a rag like, pool. And people would jump the fact it was yellowish, yellowish um, house. And uh, someone like kind of like built like steps so you can just jump over the fence so you didn't have to go through the And fence. there'd be people like, you know, meth customers there like buying that were obviously meth customers. Oh. Custom. But the weirdest stuff happens when there's a meth house like <laughs> nearby you. Like one of our neighbors no, found his car had been broken into and someone left a samurai sword in there. Meth. Hmm. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, back to Scandinavia. Anyway, <laughs> anyway back, back to Norway. Yeah. So Chris drove. Stories. Chris was a Chris was a great driver and like um he drove all the way around. I want to. Say, I call it the the penis tip of of Norway. I have a bad habit of wearing um, t shirts of the same color as the uniforms at certain stores when I go to that <laughs> store. So at Home Depot, I always would accidentally wear an orange shirt there, and oh I my noticed. Gosh. I never noticed it, but people would always come up to me for help. Yeah, and, and I was so familiar with it, I'd actually help the customers. Like he's moved ladders and like <laughs> climbed ladders, like as if he works there. Oh, and then he went. He went to Target one time, and I'm like, in a red shirt and khaki <laughs> shorts. <laughs> he had the full on uniform. And then at Whole Foods, I'd wear green, just like the Whole Foods yeah. people. All all by accident. Yeah. I don't know or if it's subliminal. And they in in like the herbal like vitamin section, you know, they asked me for help and I helped them. And he was yellow, he was yellow to Ikea. <laughs> we go to Ikea, he wears yellow. We were at Ikea recently. It's gotten expensive, really expensive in Ikea. I love that place so much. I mean, you just buy so, it's like- I don't even look at the price. Actually, I do. It's you really do. the yes, way to play. You're a liar. You damn liar. I talked without thinking again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again. My yeah, it's shaped like two 
not penises, great big cocks. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you could say Europe. Big, big old dongs. Yeah, pointing oh, straight down at Europe as if big Europe dong. is a massive vagina. Veg. And Scandinavia is looking down on it like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm going to get you good. And that's that's how it was. That's how it was for the Vikings, right? Oh, yeah. They were looking down at Europe saying, I'm going to get you. And they did. And that's why Scandinavia is so oh, rad. We went to the best museum, the Viking Museum in oh, yeah. um in in Sweden, in Stockholm. Um, so we went to this island. It's like where all these museums are, and we spent a couple of days there just walking around. And um, we decided to go and visit the Viking Museum, and that was <laughs> a fantastic museum. Yeah, the guy that even takes your tickets looks like a Viking, and he was this big gnarly Viking looking dude. Yeah. And, and there's a ride that goes through like this. It, it It's a okay. saga that it takes you through. It's kind of like the Peter Pan ride at Disneyland. Yeah. And it takes you through, through this saga of this story of, of um, <laughs> of, they okay. say it's of love I, and cruelty. I just but. want to just put in a disclosure. We, um, we don't condone this saga. Um, so, but when, it was really funny. And you're on the, on this ride from, and you're looking at it from the Vikings' a point of view. different perspective. And this is, mind you, this is a saga from the days of yore. So, so disclosure, disclosure, there's disclaimer. There's this, this part of it where the guy's on the, on his adventure and everything goes wrong and his slaves escape. And when you're on, on the ride, you're like, oh, no, his slaves escaped. He lost his okay, slaves. Okay, so the reason, so, so what, the main point of it is that this guy had to sell his slaves because if he didn't, he would have to marry off his only daughter to some like old an, dude, an old rich man, old rich man. So they needed to find three barrels of silver. The wife said, "Don't come back unless you have three barrels of silver." And um, he goes into he goes he went into off. The he went off to Europe to go raid and sell his slaves. Yes, and. And you're rooting for this dude. And at know. one point in the forest, they get ambushed by some bandits. And the bandits kill one of them. The slaves escape and they lose their money. And you're like, and you're thinking about it from the Vikings' point of view. Oh, no, they've lost everything. You're like, They lost their slaves. That was, they, were, they were bad people. And that to was the written. perspective. <laughs> and but, only after the ride do you catch yourself and realize... That maybe the, he wasn't the best guy in the world. No. <laughs> I, think, I think the lesson was learned. But you get caught up in the excitement of it. Oh, yeah. And there was another great mm. ride, and that was at the Pippi Longstockings spot, right? Yeah, Villa Villa Kula. Yes. So uh, we took Axe to Villa Villa Kula, and um, we went on this ride, and he was he's down for it. Like, he loved it. He wasn't scared mm. of... This kid, I sometimes I get a little bit scared because Axe is he really loves like kind of scary things, <laughs> and he's not scared or frightened of it. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't know where he gets it from, but like he loves Iron Maiden. He, he likes loves, Eddie from Iron Maiden. He loves Maiden. Eddie from Iron Maiden, and he thinks it's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. So, you know, so he we went to Villa Villa Kula. <laughs> 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 um, oh it, was, it was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it was a great, a great in, kids museum. In Stockholm, there's this island that has all the museums and the fun stuff and, and theme parks, and there's and including the ABBA museum. Oh, yeah. In which we didn't actually get to take the tour because yeah. Axe wasn't up for it. But yeah, he was not. But um, got some was, rad clothing. Not a, they got a, a rad boy. ABBA jacket. Yeah, I got a sick ABBA shirt. Yeah, but we're gonna go back. So it. So we're gonna go check it out. This time it's like you know, it's gonna be. Um, we're used to it. We we know we know more people now in in Sweden. I have a story to tell for a fan of the show. Oh, a guy came up to me the other day and he in he's like, oh, I, I listen to your podcast and, and um, I'm a real big fan. And one of my favorite things that you've done is wrestling. Um, and so I was like, and he brought up the story. And there's you know we've been involved in WWE several times, but. One of the lesser known wrestling matches that I've been involved in was the Boogeyman. <laughs> so there's they had this character in in WWE called um Big Dick Johnson who basically does Party Boy and um they wanted Party Boy and him to have a face off. So we uh we plan, you know, we had his this... name is Big Dick Johnson. Yeah, Big Dick Johnson. 
He's actually, the guy who plays him is actually some executive at WWE, but he's a real cool guy. It's amazing. And he basically does, would do the party boy routine. So they want us to do something together. So we, we you know, we, we did something and, you know, I stripped down to my thong and I guess Vince McMahon freaked out and like, was like, they didn't tell me he was wearing a thong. And it was like, and, and um, it became this whole thing that like McMahon was like really upset about me wearing a thong and it affected like the way they broadcasted the whole match afterwards. But, um, and, um, but, um, so afterwards me and big Johnson, I had his face off and boogeyman came out and he's this gnarly, like voodoo guy. And he does this scary dance, which is really scary. And then he's eventually spits worms in your mouth and, and stuff, but he boogeyman jumped the gun and he started like attacking me before the smoke had cleared. And Mr. McMahon told him, don't, um, you know, time it like, wait, you know, let it settle in a bit. But boogeyman forgot. Cause he just, he'd been out of the ring for a while. Um, recovering from a torn bicep and he jumped the gun. So it kind of ruined the whole match. And Boogeyman was a complete gentleman. Um, but, um, you know, not too many people saw me actually wrestle him. Yeah. So what Chris is saying is that <laughs> he wants to wrestle more. But and he so wants to get in the ring. So uh, when we wrestled it, when we went to WrestleMania, yeah. they had to have this big meeting to discuss how skinny the back of, of my. There was um, a table meeting. Outf- there was a table meeting with actual. WWE executives, executives to discuss how skinny my the girth my wrestling uniform would that be could like be. the girth of your the width of 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 I think the girth my how cheeky my uh, my wrestling uniform and, tights could and be. so they're called tights <laughs> I think what you see from when you're watching it from TV at home you don't see as much but when you're um looking up from the audience where I was yeah. sitting, there's a lot more bum. So they had to have they had to have an actual meeting with the executives to discuss how cheeky my tights could be. And, you know, like some the the, uh, the amount that was agreed upon, you know, because Knoxville really wanted me in a in you know oh, he wants a skimpy you of, skimp. of as possible. So, you know, they agreed upon a pair that that like were cut to like look like cut denim pants. Yeah. But then we we give them a little extra trim after the meeting they didn't know about and i will say that knoxville is the number one thong buyer for chris like he (laughs) sends so many thongs to our house we'll just get random packages and uh, it's like he's the dude buying you lingerie and to be honest like i think it was kind of hypocritical of 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 wwe to like you know be complaining about my skimpy tights because it's not like they wear something much different but, you know, they wanted me to be intimidating Sami Zayn with my body. And if, if they weren't skimpy enough, it wouldn't have been intimidating for Sami. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think you're intimidating <laughs> enough for Sami. <laughs> <laughs> with your body. With all that skin. With all that skin. Oh, no. Gross. Oh, disgusting. No. That man. Skin. Oh, no. Yeah. But that. Oh no, Chris's man skin. If they don't show enough skin, it won't be, it won't scare him. Oh, and yeah. sure enough, Sam you know what would have beat been the more, dickens out of me. I, I think it would have been more intimidating is if you had one of those like um you know a, uh undies or the knickers that had the little shaft in the, the trunk with yeah, the trunk. and then then you swung that around. Yeah. That would have been intimidating. Oh, that would be that would be I that, that's something that I got to do. <laughs> God, those ones are rad. And imagine if I could actually get Slightly aroused. And, and Knoxville has bought you those too. So yeah. Sometimes that kind of a crowd, there's no crowd like a wrestling crowd. And that's the kind of crowd that could do okay, no, help wait, me get I'm aroused. Gonna show, I'm going to show everyone <laughs> these cheers. things. But, but Knoxville bought you um, a pair of those. He actually called us and asked us to come over to try on. But he bought you ones that were hand crocheted. Oh, those were awful. And they were very skimpy. Yeah. And... Yeah, those ones couldn't even be worn. They were there was just a string. It was like a yarn in the back. And yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if she really knew what she was doing with the crocheting. She knew. She knew damn well what she was doing. <laughs> she <laughs> um, he also bought me another. He he bought. He called us and had us come over because he got this other thong for me that had it was a we went only over one his house <laughs> only one waistband. The other somehow it stayed on with only having one waistband. The other side it's was like open. It was shot. disgusting. Somehow it stayed on by hanging on to your private spot and and your hip and your hip and and your private spot and especially your your um balls. 
You know what was amazing <laughs> is that the gravity of that. It was disgusting. He bought you two sizes because he wasn't sure. I remember he, yeah. he was like, oh, try the mediums on first. And then you were like, no, the large. <laughs> What's it called when you get on the internet and you spend a lot of time search, go really deep? You're in a rabbit hole. Yeah, he went down a rabbit hole into my swimwear. He's gotten, he's gotten <laughs> down a few rabbit holes <laughs> in the swimwear. Like, okay, so Chris, <laughs> like... Like where we we used to live near, um, I think Knoxville's <laughs> old office, and and Chris is like, yeah, I'm just gonna walk home. I'm just over the office. I'm like, okay, cool. And he comes home and he's all sweaty and he's all gross. And then he takes a leak off the balcony. And I'm like, you know, we have a toilet, right? And um, so he's peeing off the balcony, and he pulls his pants halfway down. And I look and I'm like, what are you wearing? <laughs> and he's like, oh, these are um, plastic shorts that I... <laughs> he's wearing see-through plastic shorts that PG, that Knoxville had bought in him and, and he had <laughs> walked in them. So not only that, there was like sweat. Yeah, I've been skating just... for a while. Oh, you were skating? Yeah. Oh my god! So he skated in these. I'm gonna go show you them because I, I, I think I have to bit. show you these shorts if I can go find them. But um, he had come home in these shorts that were clear, full of sweat. He's peeing off the balcony at our own home, which I don't. I didn't understand that. Um, but yeah, you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd come home from from Knoxville's office with just. The new underwear. Yeah, new underwear. Two. And new shorts. And new shorts. <laughs> new underwear, new shorts. And those I was shorts like, what are, are you more, doing? You were there for a meeting. What were you doing over in Knoxville's like office? The shorts are more offensive. Do you know what the funny thing <laughs> is, though? Room. I think, like, when, like, our relationship with Knoxville is so, it's just, it's it's out there. It's on the table. Like, our relationship with him. Um, so we'll go into his office and, you know, say hi to his assistant. And Chris would just strip down. Like, first thing he'll do, he'll just take his pants <laughs> off and try on whatever is lying around. I mean, that, that's our relationship with him. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Whatever. Well, like, yeah. Let's I don't know. Mark. I, I don't know what to say. I, I, it just comes naturally, I guess. It, it does. He's I, just like he's a member of our family and then that's how we've. It's just skin. It's just, it is skin. And I'm very Scandinavian of, about it, he, my nudity, yes, actually. Yes. And, you know, and then, and Knoxville's really nice to, to Chris about his skin. Like, he held <laughs> your balls up during the, um, the first time. In the first time. Like, we tried to film you know, and it's, the it's uh, nothing. It's like, You know, you're holding your friend's balls up. It's just skin. It's just skin. And especially when you're trying to film something. Yeah. Like when we did it's the Pioneer Source. As, as you see in Jackass 4.5. Yeah. These are the undies that I wore at WrestleMania when we got into that dust up with Sami Zayn. And as you can see, they're cheeky, but not as cheeky as I would have liked them to be. But, uh, you know, once they're on, you know, they get hiked up a little bit, but still a little conservative, not, not a, what's going to win you a wrestling match. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I, you know, it's crazy though, when, when they actually, you know, we, you know, it was planned out. Yeah, I was going to be surprised and, you know, like come out in my jumpsuit and, and, you know, tear off my clothes. They want, you know, the plan was for me to milk it a while. And I was like, God, is the crowd going to get bored of me? You know, dancing around in my sweatsuit. And then once I was up there and the crowd went wild, I was like, wow, I'm going to milk this a little bit. Like it, <laughs> there's nothing like being in the wrestling ring. There's no, there's no feeling like it. Let me see those shorts. These are, these are the shorts that Chris skated home in. From, from Knoxville's office. As you can see, they're somewhat transparent. <laughs> somewhat. Oh my. So as you can imagine, a ding-a-ling. With <laughs> fully sweated on. Actually, I don't think we washed those. No, I no. might, yeah. I don't think. No, they've never been washed. It's a waxy texture, actually. Okay, just listen to it. Oh. <laughs> Very, I can do that. Oh, it's like a raincoat. Yeah, it's raincoat material. That's what it is. They feel kind of good. Basically, to wear, like Chris, 
I mean, it is all up in there. Oh, it's like, actually, Chris, there's like stains on the inside. I, did, I didn't do anything with them. I know. <laughs> it's not exactly like, it's it's not exactly clean. Let's just say that. I actually peed my pants a little bit on the way to getting these yeah, shorts. probably. No, not in the shorts, but on the way to getting them, I peed my, my real underwear. That's why I had to wear oh, these. You know. Um, yeah, because I, I was going into a cafe um, I just realized this. I was going to a cafe and he had to get the key and I, I was going to get a coffee and everything, uh-huh. but and I had to pee super bad and I, I let some pee out accidentally in my, enough that it became my real underwear were a little uncomfortable. And that explains why I was That's wearing why these. That's why you were wearing yeah. those. Because I peed okay. my real ones. <laughs> <laughs> so. I remember when we were on that um, Canada tour, I don't know what city we were in, but you had diarrhea and the only person that like- I was in Cape Breton. Oh, see, you know, you remember. And I remember that um, Dave felt sorry for you. Yeah, Dave, who has, has diarrhea really all the nice. time, he felt for me and he went, he was so nice. He he was sweet, in fact. He, he went and got me an extra pair of underwear because yeah. I was in a really awkward position. I'd done, I'd passed gas and, and accidentally diarrhea. Yeah. In a, no, he got me new underwear. He was super sensitive to the situation. Yeah. I really appreciate that, Dave. Um, Dave, I don't, listening. Dave, if you're listening, <laughs> I love you. We love you. And I hope to one day do something equally thoughtful. You know, one time Rick Kosick was a bad boy on the plane. Oh, yeah? Yep. We were coming back from France, and he was having his little entertainment system was acting up on him. And he lost his temper, and he, he punched it or he kicked it. I can't remember which. With a person in front actually sitting in the seat, and, he, and it shattered it. So like, <laughs> Rick so, is really strong. He's really strong. And at the time... He, he uh, you know, I guess on that flight, he was sh- he, a little short-tempered. I would say, whatever you do, do not get into a fight with Rick Hossick because no. he is, he he knows how to fight. People have underestimated yeah. him. Okay, so this this guy, like you think, like timid dude, blah, 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 like he's really quiet. He can mow you down. He's a brute savage. He is a savage man. If he has um, to be. He's big. He's tall. He's strong. And, and he's super strong. Yeah. So he he got mad at the entertainment system and he he, and he shattered it. And um and so like at the airport, like, you know, it was reported, yeah. you know, to the authorities. So he actually got pulled off like off like at cust at immigration and you know, he had to buy a whole new entertainment system for him. It was it was See, costly. This is like He was one of those guys that, that was But this bad. is before it was before like stuff got really strict, but he yeah. had to spend like thousands of dollars on yeah. a new monitor or whatever they yeah. charged him. If you act up on a plane and you break something, now? they really upcharge you. Yeah, or you go to no fly. Yeah, or you go to no fly list, yeah. yeah. Or you go to jail. You go to jail. Also coming back from Japan, Preston Lacey tried to steal his seatbelt for some reason. And the flight attendant actually came out. Wait, why? Oh, I don't know why he wanted to steal it. No, no, you know what? He probably wanted the... I don't know. No, she. I, I didn't even know he had it. And the, this um, this Japanese um, flight attendant came out in front of the airport. She's like, "Could I?" She says something to him, and he, he's like, "Oh, sorry." And he gives her a seatbelt back. And I was like, "Preston, and maybe you just forgot." I think he wanted to keep it as a souvenir from the flight. Oh, okay. Well, there's a lot of other things you could keep. Yeah. Off the flight, like, but also nowadays it's like airlines. Airlines are so dirty. Like airplanes are super dirty. I don't think anyone really realizes it. Because like you know the cleaning crew goes in, but there was an incident just recently, like where two women um, were kicked off a flight on Air Canada because they were sitting in like um, vomit, vomit, not diarrhea. That's terrible. That's when I think that's a biohazard, isn't it? Like diarrhea, that would be a no, whole biohazard. No, no, no one wanted to be on that plane anymore because human feces, when it's not in water, is smells so bad. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't even want to imagine. No, that. I don't want to either. That sounds but so it's, gross. It's reality, and that that crew of 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 um, passengers and, and had to, had, yeah had to live it. That sucks, man. <laughs> Far out. That that sounds so. I'm hectic. at a loss for words when I hear that story. That's but. so hectic. That sounds. I I would just go home. I like wherever I'm going. If like I'm turning back, I'd be like, you know, I'm just gonna. I'm losing. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna have a shower. Just cry. Just you know, that that sucks. Especially if you're responsible for it. Mm-hmm. Like, how would you feel? But 
See, this is the scary part of that. So would that guy get sued by the other passengers for like ruining their vacation or their or their trips? Like, no. Would he be responsible no. for that? No. It was a medical. It, it, it's considered a medical condition. Okay. All right. He probably had food poisoning or something. Oh, that's hectic. What the fuck did he eat? Sorry, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have sworn, but like, what is he? Sometimes eating? it's merited, though. <laughs> Sorry for your language, but sorry sometimes for, it's like, called for. Just like, what did you eat that you just had explosive <laughs> diarrhea like that? Like, did you not, like, did you lick some guy's foot that was just walking barefoot in, like, the subway station in downtown L.A.? Like, what were you doing? Like, uh, You can get diarrhea from eating a salad made by someone with dirty hands, as it happened to me. We, uh, he got that. It was, like, coming out of all different sections of his body oh. you know what there's a men's lingerie company now and i i saw it i looked it up and i sent the link to pete i think i sent the link <laughs> to, to uh knoxville but this guy um this man shall i say he started making men's lingerie he's straight and he is married and he just wants like a male version of lingerie they're not they're very skimpy you can't blame men for wanting a little higher cut underpants though Oh, no, these are underpants. What are they? These are like full-on lace lingerie <laughs> for men. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it on one of my like late night, like, you know, romps on the computer when I, I, get, I go down rabbit holes yeah. as well. Um, I think everyone does now, especially now with like you're being monitored. I've seen you on a, full, a few men's lingerie rabbit holes. Yeah. I, I mean... If you want to call it that, you're also you're kind of looking at costumes for me, you know yeah, those yeah. those guys with the weird lingeries that are like ribbons that yeah. There's some <laughs> crazy stuff around. out there, it's especially that, from Hong Kong. Yeah, and you know who made it really big? I think it was Borat when Borat came oh, out yeah. with that big like slingshot um, one piece, so, yeah. <laughs> and then it just kind of turned slingshot. Um, you know, bathing suit is what normally people in like bikini contests wear once they make it to the finals to drive them over the edge to get the first place ribbon. I feel like we've seen a few wrestlers in the slingshots. Um, we've seen uh, some people at, like in Palm Springs at like a hotel, like just wearing slingshot yeah. bath bathing suits. Men. I think I think it was also they were trying to be funny. They trying to be funny, yeah. Yeah. Someone someone got me a slingshot, a uh, like Borat style bathing suit once, like, and for a jack Jackass World, and it would like it didn't fit, and it was. It was useless on me. Useless. I think I have it still somewhere. It was useless. It was just a bad. It was. It, was, it didn't fit right. I would have loved if it. Just it, completely it, useless. It was, on yeah. Me. The slingshot bathing suit useless. <laughs> <laughs> but what was your favorite part of of skin of the Scandinavia um, trip? What was your favorite thing? Oh, um, the whole thing was awesome. No, take like specific. Um, oh, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I think, and I tell you, my favorite part mm. was when we walked to the palace in Oslo, and it was just pouring rain. Oh yeah! And Axe was asleep the whole entire time, and he was under his little like rain shelter with his rad rain shelter on on the yo-yo. Um, which, by the way, I I personally believe that the yo-yo by Baby Zen is the best travel stroller. They're not being paid and to say that. Not being paid to say that. I've, we've just we've traveled with this stroller to uh, Asia, to the Australia. Bahamas, to Australia, to all of Scandinavia, um, to Hawaii, and we and Chris and I we walk. We are we are these people, these weirdos that walk thousands and thousands of steps every single day, and um, especially when we're traveling, we are foot. We are. We are logging time. I, I have a story okay, to tell about tell Norway. Um, we, we were actually in Norway on Norway Day, which was our national day. And so it was a, pretty much our first full day in Norway. Like everyone's dressed up in traditional Norwegian attire. So beautiful. Which is awesome. And, and they pretty much just party all day long and into the night. Into so, the night. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we had a great time like you know, celebrating this holiday with all them. It was May 17th and, and then, we just so happened to be there. And then that night, um, we the next day we were, we were going to be leaving to go on a road trip. And um, that night, um, a fire alarm went off in our hotel and in the middle of the, the night. Morning. 
Yeah, and so everyone had to evacuate, and it was a big hotel. Every the whole hotel had to evacuate onto the streets where the streets were like. And, and we were in cent in the center of town. So and by this, this time, like everyone Central was Station. really drunk on the streets. Yeah. So people like, like had puke, to walk down the puke stairs. Puke everywhere. There was puke everywhere. Puke everywhere. Bottles everywhere. Uh, like drunken people, and then all the hotels. Some of them in their pajamas. Thousands. Some of, of them people. naked with nothing but a, a blanket wrapped but, around yeah. them. They didn't even put their pants on. Yeah. To like to evacuate the hotel, which, come on, but but you know, <laughs> so we yeah, I'm holding weird, the baby, yeah. sleeping. It was so, and we had to horrible. put our jackets on because it was cold outside. Yeah. At least so we brought had, what we needed. I had acts like full on, like as soon as we had. Okay, so it was the middle of the night. Like we just, we were all just like all three of us fast asleep, and 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 I'm just like, what is happening? And it was like the fire alarm, and it was you know because of of the days that we live in now you have to take every fire alarm you have to take it seriously seriously and all the drunken people on the streets were wondering what, what all these people <laughs> with blankets on them were doing i <laughs> felt we like doing. they thought we were having a toga party or something yeah but and we had a great view so so they had put us in this in this hotel room where we could see like the main part of the street so the for most part of the day we were inside the room because we were packing our room up and um we were just watching people avoid like this pool of Vomit, vomit. <laughs> like right in front of the hotel. People fight, get, get, oh, got into a fight. Fights. We saw this one guy that was like, like stumbling around drunk. He could barely walk. He, he, he also had a broken leg, leg, but he was also really wasted. <laughs> he went into this corner to go pee. And right as he was about to start peeing, I guess his, the woman was his wife or girlfriend, like came up to him <laughs> and tapped him on the back. And he turns around, just like nothing was going on. It was, it was just so was awesome. He was mid-pee. The bird's like eye view. mid-peeing. Like and you know what? I saw some guys get got into a fight and one of them handed him a knife or something. We thought oh, we were yeah. gonna see a stabbing. Yep. And on the streets of Norway, that's very rare. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't happened on a daily basis since nine hundred the year nine hundred and forty nine or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Viking era. Nine hundred forty nine. I mean, that's the height of the Viking era. You know, back then I'm sure it happened every day, but nowadays in Oslo, I like it's a relatively <laughs> I think I saw something else that was dated to that recently. <laughs> You know, back then in, in Norway, that would happen every other day, or if yeah. not every day. But Shaking. nowadays, Oslo is a pretty safe place to walk yeah. around. Oslo is beautiful. That's a nice city. Really That's a beautiful. really cool place to, to hang out. Yeah, we saw well, a lot. It's a dangerous place to walk. Yeah, it's a, a lot of people <laughs> with broken legs, like cars. There was a lot of people. Totally. I, I would say well, maybe in our whole trip, I saw about 10 people. Norwegians That's, are really out into going into the outdoors, though. So yeah. they do a lot of hiking, and so there's a lot of places to stumble. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably it what happened. It's slippery. It's super slippery because it rains. Yeah. It's slippery. A lot of mountaineering going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of tide pooling. I mean, that one place with the swords and the rocks. Okay. Okay. Another really great thing about Scandinavia, how beautiful the people are. Oh, yeah. And like... I'm not kidding you, like people that were like <laughs> laborers, like the people painting it, they were all like the women, so nicely done up. Um, the guys, Woman, gorgeous. Yeah, like people that would just be average there would be like- Elevens here. Yeah, elevens here. And, yeah. They're, and they're just regular people there. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> like, and in like Norway, in, in Sweden, in Stockholm, like- uh, the mounted police. Yeah. Uh, they're all just tall, Amazon, gorgeous, like supermodel women. Yeah. They're, they're, they're <laughs> on cops. horses. On horses. Yeah. With swords. With swords. Yeah. Like, it was crazy. I mean, I feel like, <laughs> for me, like being this little Filipina, like looking up to it, it's like, it was like I walked into, um, you know what was the Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman's like a, a, a Atlantis. Island? Atlantis. It was like walking into Atlantis and being like, "Oh, okay, I'm just like the, I'm the troll that lives under the the bridge <laughs> that you know you cross a troll here." <laughs> but like it was crazy. All the women everyone there, from there feels like a troll compared oh to God. them. And the dude, like the guys, they're all super tall. Yeah, the, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's exactly what you'd imagine. It would yeah. Be. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you're, it's a trip. Oh, we fell in love with Max Burger. I, I don't I don't know how how popular Max Burger is, but it's uh it's this fast food chain. It just so happened to be like close to where we were, but they had vegetarian options. It's delicious. Chris. If you're ever there, 
Max Burger rules. Yeah. And you get everything vegetarian too. Um, I, I wish I got to eat more Scandinavian food and try more of the local fare. But that Max Burger was so good. <laughs> <laughs> Especially their, that bar- barbecue Korean um, like burger. Korean, God, yeah. I got the vegetarian version of that all the time. Man. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, down on some of else, the traditional the, cuisine, yeah, so the, but, but the their, their contemporary fast food is delicious too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I, I I did enjoy their breakfast at the hotel. Oh yeah. Every morning, and they had like um. Fish it's exactly food. what you would like. Yeah. Like fish. Fish, salmon. They have a lot of salmon. Um, it's it's sick. It's a good. It's a great place. So, so we have to go pick up Young Axe from school. Yes, but. Thanks for watching, listening, and thanks to everyone in Scandinavia. We had such a great oh, time. And fantastic. Bill, were awesome. And you're so good to us. We're going to come back, and I hope that you're going to be good to us after this show. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, we loved it. Yeah. We also love America. <laughs> <laughs> and Americans are pretty good-looking people, too. Yeah. You know. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Just in a different way. I, and I, I can't guarantee you that where Wonder Woman's from is called Atlantis, but I think it's called Atlantis. Is it? I think so. Someone could fact check me. I'm fact sure they will. Us. But I th- I mean, Wonder Woman doesn't, I mean, she's not a real Just person. Just click here on the subscribe button to <laughs> fact check us. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where Wonder Woman comes from. Atlantis or Atlantia or something. Hey, Siri, where does Wonder Woman come from? Atlanta. The island nation of Themsihara, not Atlanta. Uh, What's it called? Atlanta, Georgia. Wonder Woman comes from the island nation of Themyscira. Well, I was way off with Atlantis. (laughs) Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Scandinavia, thanks for the awesome time. Yeah, we're going back. (laughs) We want to get awesomer inside you. Awesomest. (laughs) (laughs) Ha 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 